that's out of the way. Let's talk. Due to some violent content, parental discretion is advised. That turns me off. Bond it, Jay. Oh, yes, sir. Let's get your ass back here. Boy next, boy next door. Boy next, boy next door. Hello, Michael Ringtail here, your human observer. Well, it's that time of year again where we spend 30 days justifying why we have pride. Why exactly are we celebrating an unchangeable fact about yourself that's widely accepted by the majority of Americans? Hearing reactionaries tell us corporate sponsors don't care about us, as if we didn't know that, along with more variations on the attack helicopter joke. Well, at least that's what I thought was going on. That has changed because within the last week, the real debate of whether kink should be allowed at Pride has boiled over. Quote, Here we come to my first issue with BDSM and kink at Pride. Consent. You may have no problem parading your sex life down North Halstead in Chicago or through Trafalgar Square, but others might not be willing to participate in your fetish or even see it. Actually, it's funny because I came across an article from The Advocate in 2019 with the same argument. And going back 10 years, that same argument has also taken place. In fact, I think it's been taking place for a long time. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. First, let's go over what Pride actually is. There seems to be this misunderstanding among mostly young, moral, grandstanding, leapfrogging locusts who never went to Pride swarming Twitter that think Pride is about queer humans trying to show that, Hey everybody, we're queer. But we're just like you straight. <laughs> or rather trying to prove to a society who vastly rejects them that they are worthy of acceptance by trying to be like them as much as they can. Even if that means wearing a mask for acceptable optics and fag bashing those who don't pass as easy. Historically and to this day it is a protest. We're here, we're queer, get used to it motherfucker, pull that stick right out of your rear is the sentiment. It's about liberation, normalizing queer human expression in a human world that enforces heteronormativity. It's something every other animal species doesn't give a fuck about, but for queer humans, they have had to fight and die in order to gain tolerance from the mainstream. This idea that the more eccentrically expressed need to be hidden away or shamed out of existence so you all could be seen as one of the good ones is a spit in the face and a piss on the grave of all those who have come before you. Why not just give in to the initial Christian of man and go back into the closet then? Pride is a protest, not about appeasing to your oppressors so they might spare you the acid pit last. <laughs> The initial moral outrage came from people looking in from the outside. It was gay men and women kissing and holding hands in public during the 1970s. It was drag queens daring to step out of the underground dingy bars, and trans people just showing that they exist. As human queer existence became more normalized, there was the first wave of infighting with those claiming that the more flamboyant types of queer people were given queer identity a bad name in the 80s. Does this already sound familiar and relatable to what was going on today? It was predictable that as conservative slug fuckers lost the battle against gay humans, their attention would then turn to those who were trans. Sure enough, things that were never an issue were turned into one, like suggesting that trans people who look like this should be forced to use public restrooms related to the gender of their birth. Then came military bans, and now sports is in debate over trans people, mainly trans women, competing. What can I say other than equality's a bitch? Biatch! You can't fake being trans either without confirmation from multiple medical professionals either, so don't even try to unwrap that nothing argument dried up cum sock. Now because the cycle of bigoted viewpoints is so predictable and going fast as ever thanks to the net, as the fight against trans people is being lost, it is predictable that paraphilias will be next. BDSM, fantasy roleplay, puff hoods, 
And sure enough, that's gaining a lot of traction now. In the United States, it's legal to use involvement in fetish culture as a basis for firing someone or denying that person's security clearances. Consensual adult kink has been used against parents in child custody hearings. Participation in BDSM has been used against victims in rape trials. But in Russia, for example, police have raided illegal BDSM clubs, arrested people, and participation in BDSM culture is legal grounds for revocation of a driver's license on the basis of mental illness. For furries, as an example, it's still a complaint that people who walk around in mer suits and pup hoods should keep that stuff hidden away because it gives us all a bad name. This is ridiculous, okay? This is not meant for the public eye. A bad name to who? Your dad? Well, you know what they say, fuck your dad. In fact, I'm fucking your dad right now. And under the eyes of the law, he's an animal rapist now because I am a lemur and I can't consent to having sex with humans. Before we go any further, there needs to be clarification that the kink scene everyone is fake outraging about is a small minority at these events. The pups, gimps, and master pimps are all outnumbered by humans wearing tank tops and shorts. It's not even the forefront of any pride event simply for it being so small, and even if it was, so fucking what? Then there are the children. Ah yes, everyone's favorite theatrical props, human children. When it comes to trying to justify discrimination, humans love fetishizing childhood innocence and teenage naivete, using them as weapons to argue against free expression of adults. If you decide to conceive or adopt a kid, that's on you. You don't normally take your kid to a protest, much like you wouldn't take a kid to a furry convention either, unless you are willing to explain to them the things they may see. I'm not responsible for your kids. That's why they are your kids. When it comes to pride events, it's not anyone's fault that a kid is exposed to something like this other than the one that brought them there to begin with, to a protest. And I can't fucking stress enough exactly what is the harm of some kid at pride seeing a leather daddy or a pup parade anyways. Any answers? See, no one can do it. I can. Ultimate Gamer 55529. You see, I was destined to be a normal person Growing up, I had, I had it all going for me. But then, one day, at a pride festival, I saw a grown man in a leather costume, acting like a dog, rolling around like a dog. I was only a child. After what I saw, I immediately ran to the nearest thing and killed it. <laughs> I could have been a doctor. I could have been president. WHY PRIDE? WHY?! As far as pedos are concerned, I'm sorry to inform you, but no one wants to fuck your kid. I know you think that little twerp is the hottest little shit, that all the pedo bears are fighting each other over trying to get that first tap. But that's not happening. The only major pedophilia rings that are currently going on are religious sects like... All of them. But especially Catholics, Muslims, and Mormons as well as the sex rings down south in places like Florida, also ignored by the vast majority because it usually involves a lot of poor minorities. I hate this perpetuating false narrative of a secret cabal of child abusers that are trying to find ways to infiltrate the public queer scene. Cause you know, abusers love being out in the open, in the daylight, surrounded by the public as they try to trick little Timmy into his burlap sack thinking there's a PlayStation in there. Trick it, trick it, trick it, trick it people! Everywhere you look, it could be another tricky person! Tricky people, tricky, tricky people, they look like you and me. It's more realistic at this point that there is likely to be a mass shooter at one of these events. I don't even think I even have to try to find any recent ones. I know for sure there is at least one mass shooting event within the last month here in the United States. Did you know that there were 10 mass shootings this past weekend? It is just another normal weekend in the United States of America. Another topic that comes up is degenerate imagery only gives ammo to the conservative bigots who use that to justify discriminatory practices like this image for instance. By the way, this is at Folsom, an event that states on the front page of their website, leave your kids at home. Besides that though, so fucking what? Since when do any of you care what right-wing Christian conservative America thinks of you? It doesn't matter what image you present to the public. It will never be good enough until you eventually go backwards and you end up pulling the shade over trans, drag, and any abnormal outfits in general. 
Unless they are lesbians, because lesbians are cool. In fact, I would say Poland's Pride Parade is fairly tame in its overall attire. How's that working out for them over there? <laughs> yep, looks like things are going completely 100% fantastic. LGBT free zones too. This year, at least 100 communities have declared themselves LGBT free zones. Oh, that means free of LGBT zones. Oh. My bad. Wow, Poland doing things backwards like they normally do. Here, the police are actually tear gassing the counter protesters against queer people. Interesting, police defending queer people. Of course, the cynical side of me says that this protection of queer humans by police is a political move in order to rile up the more religious straight people to vote against queer rights over there by making the majority feel like they are oppressed because they're being denied the ability to block and discriminate against people they don't like for existing. <laughs> to emphasize again, Kink is not front and center at these events. They have always been open to families of all natures. It has since been co-opted though by a lot of billion dollar companies sponsoring their own floats so they can smear their corpo logo feces all over the street because they are now generally on our side because fuck you money 50 years ago corporations wouldn't touch the gay community and now they can't wait to show their love in public as outside interest grows there is in turn concerning kink and the effect it may have on pride's brand image Dr. Corpo here, and I want to say on the Ultra Force Mega Core that we here welcome anyone of any type of skin color, whether they be a black or a Hispanic or an orientation of a different attraction. You are all welcome to use our services and products as you see fit. And China's honor will be defended, and we will cater to the reasonable demands of the regime that's currently in power. Whether that be erasing all queer mentions in our entertainment media, and never talking bad about the fun summer camps that you're shipping all the Uyghurs to. What we say here at Ultra Force Megacore, from Hong Kong to Taiwan, China number one. And with the faith traditions that you hold as a country, we will always respect those. Your Catholic dogma is what keeps you strong as a people. And defiance of natural law is just not acceptable. And we cater our products and services to the sensibilities of your nation. And we like your money and would be honored if you allowed our shows and products to be showcased in your progressive nation. Just buy our shit. Corporations are not your friends, and to the queers who can't even bother to attend Pride in most cases, appeasing the corporations is not the butt-fucking point of Pride. If you feel like your outfit is some kind of conduct that may repeal Target from sponsoring a float, good, fuck them. It's good that companies are endorsing Pride, but at the same time, they don't get to dictate what counts as acceptable behavior among consenting adults. Once again, we are down this road of wanting to be more mainstream, presentable, in a feeble attempt to try and get more people to hate us less for existing. Like this next fellow, Crafty Andy. Yes, I am Crafty Andy. You old Italian son of a bitch. Now, long before I acknowledged and accepted my queerness, I had to accept my weirdness. I was very resistant to go to a furry convention. In fact, I was very resistant to interacting with anyone in any kind of public manner. That included online. I was in fear of losing my friends, my job, any career aspects, all because of the narratives that you pick up online when it comes to the furry scene. That they should die, they're disgusting, freaks are not productive to society in any way. Uh, most of them can't even hold a job, and if they do hold a job, it's usually fast food or something along those lines. Can't communicate worth a damn. Death threats, harassment, targeted harassment, doxing, 
So I got the idea of how unacceptable it is to say how you're sexually excited about Crystal from Star Fox in the same way that you would be regarding a celebrity. So I kept quiet. My bisexual nature wasn't even on my mental radar. Even though those desires were there, I just pretended that they weren't. I wouldn't even acknowledge them to myself. You don't know how fucked up it is to think there is absolutely no support for you whatsoever, friends or family. There may be clubs and support groups for queers, even in the early 2000s, but there certainly wasn't a support group for being a freak. So I had all the other aspects in my mind about either being sent away to some camp. One morning I woke up, two guys were at my house. They were woken up at six o'clock in the morning with escorts telling them, you know, they had five minutes to leave. And they were just like, hi, Ty, you need to wake up and put clothes on. You're going to a school in the Dominican Republic. And I was like, Psh, I don't think so. Or just being ostracized by the entire family altogether. I was more willing to tell one of my best friends in high school how I was sexually assaulted when I was seven by a friend of mine who was the same age as me. Then I was willing to tell him about how fucking hot Renamon is. It wasn't until I saw Tracy Butler, the creator of Lackadaisy, who became a guest of honor at Furry Connection North in 2009. It's 2021 and now Lackadaisy is becoming a movie. She certainly didn't lose her friends or career aspects or her publisher didn't drop her. I realized the narrative was a lot different than I had in mind initially. So with the help of a friend giving me a kick in the ass, I was off with my newfound confidence to go to a furry convention. Undercover, pretending I'm just there to film video and not be part of the, the scene. <laughs> now, do I ever blame the initial resistance on the sexual aspects that were out in the open and promoted in the media. Check this out. Nice. <laughs> no. Fuck no. Especially now looking back. It wasn't the imagined extreme sexual displays that I thought was going to be going on at these things. I didn't even know there was a big queer scene within the fandom until I was there for two days at the convention. It was the fear that I was going to be going through the exact same shit I already went through in grade school. Set myself up for harassment, targeted, doxing, ridicule, threats. So to keep a long story short, because it is its own story, 2009, same year, accepted and came to terms with my own bisexuality. I was always very nonchalant about being a furry and being queer. I was very nonchalant coming out to my mother and her reaction made me realize that it's gonna be more of a serious discussion than I'd like it to be when it came to my father. That all being said, there are plenty of other people that feel the need to emphasize to their family and friends what they are not for some reason. They'll talk about all these dark things. It's more along the lines of trying to lessen the blow, to make it more easy to them that you're different. Oh, my son might be gay, but he's not one of those weirdos that dress up in leather or some shit like that and make it clear that they're not like those people. I'm, I'm very normal. I'm just, you know, I just, I just like dick. I just really like dick, mom. It's fine. So to those people, I say it's nice that your mommy and pappy are much more accepting of you because you made it strictly clear you're not one of those naughty, dirty queers that act like dogs or dress up in funny outfits. Thanks for further stigmatizing a vulnerable portion of the community, asshole. Making a better and easier to swallow image for myself in the eyes of the majority would mean staying with a girl and having kids. Be in denial of my furriness. Never being open in relationships, never being into a poly relationship, never exploring different experiences, understanding queer is more than just the common stereotypes we grew up with on television. I'm not even sure bisexuality exists. I, I think it's just a, a layover on the way to gay town. And realizing my own bisexuality. My parents are still married at 40 years now, and despite them creating a 
caring environment for me. I got over feeling the need to have their full understanding and acceptance of myself in order to feel validated in life. They're happy because I'm happy. The main important thing is to accept yourself as you are primarily. Otherwise, you run the risk of either constantly feeling anxious over other people's opinions about you and or feeling a need to overcompensate in some moral fashion to make up for some deep-seated guilt you have regarding the skeletons you keep in your closet. You know the type. They might be a little jealous when it comes to relationships, stalkery, even entitled. Or maybe it's the ones that feel a sting of guilt every time they nut to some adverse fantasy that they hold. They're imagining some big burly bear dude shaking his hiney, waving that red handkerchief hanging out of his right pocket. In lustful rage, they leap out at him, rip off those jeans to expose that big moon of an ass. And they dive in, fist first, right past that pre lube sphincter. Right into the warm, welcoming intestinal cave. Oh, 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 I, I hate myself. No, this isn't me. This isn't me. I'm one of the good ones. We need to clean up our image. No more sluts. No more sluts. I call them out. I'm not bad. I hate bad things. Oh, but they're so hot. No. And then when they get slightly horny again down the road, that doom loop continues. The cycle will go on and on and on and on. The more they resist, ironically, the more stronger the urges and attractions become. So rather than coming to terms and accepting what they are, understanding that it doesn't determine who they are as a person, they rather double down based on some expectation placed upon them by society or family, what have you. Because men are being feminized and women are becoming masculine. And that's how you get a lot of these homophobic, bigoted preachers and politicians. And it gets to a point where they might be way in too deep in order to come out. Or at least they think they are. Shrock solicited sex from a male prostitute. David Dreyer had a romantic relationship with a man. James E. West picked up guys on gay.com. Mark Foley sent sexual messages to male staff. These are the gay, gay homophobes. But now, science has proven that if you're a homophobe, then you're probably gay. And that's why it's always good to question those who are very almost irrational when it comes to their hatred upon some other group, no matter what that group is, even if it is a, like a heinous type of person. There, there comes a point where you have to ask yourself, what is this person making up for? It's like how you see a person who, as they get older, they become extremely religious, like dedicated, going to church every day, almost, as much as they can, praying, preaching the word, and then you look at their past and you realize that it's a fucking mess. Point is, it's just better to accept yourself and take on the consequences head on as you tell people and find your true friends in life. That's all there is to say about that, I think. My name is Nishoba. So recently with this whole argument uh, with who should and shouldn't be at Pride, celebrating their lives, their sexualities, and what makes Pride Pride, this argument has been going on for the last five, six years that I can remember by people who've either never been to Pride or say they've been to Pride but are lying out their ass. I have to get this off my chest because I am sick and tired of people who don't know their LGBT history trying to tell the LGBT people who are actually part of the community who fight for LGBT rights still to this day how to conduct themselves and how to behave at their own event where one time a year they can be open about who they truly are. That does not make them assholes, that does not make them racist, that does not make them rapists or pedophiles according to some bread tubers out there who are just living up this terrible
terrible, terrible, homophobic, heteronormative, heterosexist hype train to bag on people who are in the kink community. Hey kids, it's really important for the queer community to remember that Pride is not a kinky event. It is a celebration of love, not about sex. And if you show up in leathers, you are a danger to children. And Vosh fucking defends this. I... Mm. Oh boy. Oh, I'm about to get mad. I'm molding. I am. Look at this. Oh God. If you believe that kink people shouldn't be at pride, then you should not be at pride. Because if it wasn't for the kinksters out there who are intertwined and unbreakably intertwined, I should say, to LGBT and the LGBT movement, you wouldn't fucking be here being able to have that opinion. You would be in the similar situation of Chechnya that's going on right now, or if we want to go back about 60, 70 years, you would be in the concentration camps in Auschwitz or in other areas of Germany. So be thankful that you're not in those situations because us kingsters got you there, you little fucking ungrateful prick. If you so believe that these are supposed to be safe spaces for underage children wearing gear, like leather, like a pup hood, like a fursuit, especially a fucking fursuit, is not inherently sexual. You make it sexual in your mind. You are the one who project that onto them. Can someone tell me how this is sex? And how if someone were to witness this, it would be sexual assault? Does, it, does anyone know how? And most of the people in the king community aren't doing things with their stuff. At the time. In the public. And anyone then using the strawman argument and the red herring argument that they're waving a helicopter dicking themselves around in front of children is dishonest and no more reactionary than a right wing idiot who is trying to drum up views. Hey, are you sad that 50 pedophiles were killed today? Um, no, I think that's great. I, I, I think that helps society. If you are on the left or liberal or even a centrist, or a libertarian for that matter, and you're banging on this narrative, maybe you need to look yourself in the mirror and wonder if you really are who you think you are. Because you are not part of us, that's for sure. You are not part of the LGBTQ plus community. You are a person who is trying to cause desertion and also cause division amongst our own people. You are trying to erase the people who created pride. You are trying to erase the people who give you the fucking rights that you have today. That being said, for those of you out there who are curious or wondering about Pride, Pride is an event for everyone, especially adults. And when I say everyone, I don't mean underage children who their parents are afraid to explain to them what is going on. Pride is not meant to be for straight people. It is not meant to be for people who don't understand LGBT culture, LGBT families, or LGBT history. It is not meant for them. Pride is for us. And when we say it's for all, it's for all LGBT in the LGBT culture, in the LGBT world. It is not for straight people. It is not for people who are uncomfortable. It is most certainly not for people who hold tradcon views, who believe that they have a right to dictate how we should act in our own fucking venues. So if you have a problem with pride and you have a problem with people being able to express themselves at pride, then here's my advice. Don't go Get the fuck out and don't let the door hit you on the fucking way out, princess. I am so tired of seeing people, especially on the left, absorb these right-wing, anti-gay, heterosexist talking points and then try to shove them down the throats of gay people. Yeah, people don't know what to do with Mardi Gras because they know it's a parade that is heavily, heavily inclusive of uh, people of color. People of color are heavily represented in Mardi Gras parades, and it's a venue of multiculturalism and sharing the culture of music. And it's also a venue where people are draping their big old smilkers over the balcony and getting fucking shit thrown at them. So people don't want to argue against it. See, it's just like, it's so much easier to moralize with queer people, isn't it? So much easier to argue that queer people should have to fucking adjust their standards so that people don't get offended than it is to argue that black people should adjust their standards at Mardi Gras so people don't get offended, isn't it? So much simpler. And then they try to hide behind arguments of assimilation and everything else. I'm sorry, but we can assimilate while still having power. Assimilation means giving the dominant culture power over us. Fuck that, no. 
the dominant culture bends to us for all the horrors they've done to us throughout the generations, the fucking millennia, and then some. Throughout much of the 20th century, gay men and women were involuntarily committed to psychiatric facilities by their families in hopes of getting the gay out. They used drugs, they put people into comas, they used electroconvulsive shock treatment. Lobotomy was another brutal procedure intended for all sorts of mental disorders. This tool was used by Dr. Walter Freeman, who often left patients severely disabled. Of the thousands of lobotomies, roughly 40% were on homosexuals. Pride is a middle finger to the church and to the bigots out there who've told us how evil and sick we are for simply loving one another. And kingsters were the only ones at the time who had the ovaries and the balls, or neither, to fucking fight for us. So before you go out there and trying to erase the people who made our world today possible, remember, you're not fucking welcome if you believe that. Either way, that's my two cents into this whole argument. And uh, if you don't like it, then go fuck yourself because I'm sick and tired of having this argument. I'm an old gay at this point. I'm tired of having to have the same argument every fucking year with little children who don't understand the world around them. And I'm calling even people who are 30 years old little children because they don't fucking learn or read about LGBT history. And finally, for anyone out there who's going to try to use Pride has evolved, no it hasn't. The world hasn't changed. It is just as bad as it was before. Marquise Kiki from Troy was 21 years old. Brie Black was 27. They're just two in a longer list of victims reportedly targeted for their sexual identity and murdered in South Florida. Sure, we have a few extra rights now, but horrors are still happening to our people across the entire world. Pride is a protest. It is a fucking riot against the establishment that tries to hurt us. What you are doing is you're sucking the fucking dick, licking the boots and asshole of the corporate world that wants to sterilize and, and pink wash and gay race, or I should say LGBT race, pride so that they can sell their merchandise and sell you some bullshit fucking slogan that they care about you when the next fucking politician who gets in who's a right wing shithole, they'll just switch to his side. So there you go. When people say fuck corporations out of the pride, this is what they mean. Corporations don't care about you. Don't fucking fall for their narrative and don't believe the bullshit bread tubers out there who are trying to tell you pride is supposed to be for straights as well. It is not. It is for gay people. It is our house and those people are guests. And if they don't want to follow the rules of the house, they can get the fuck out. Pride is a protest for people who are different to come out of the closet and freely express themselves. It's not about conforming to expectations to make outsiders feel comfortable. Kink at Pride is already a non-issue to begin with. No one wants your kids to come up to them. No one is asking you to bring your kids. Get a babysitter or go to Disneyland instead and get some rainbow Mickey Mouse ears if you're so fucking concerned. Other areas I might recommend, Chuck E. Cheese if you can find one that's still open. Laser tag, Cedar Point, Six Flags. How about for the next park you build, kill the most guests as fast as possible. Feel free to give me your takes though. I'm Michael Ringtail, your human observer. Happy Pride, everyone. All. Hey, fuck you, well, we're here, we're queer. Get used to it. Here's my you know big what? queer ass, you fucking faggot stomping piece of fucking shit. Paul. Come you know stomp what? us on Pride Day, motherfucker. It's not about whether your toddler can get a fucking lolly. Well, thank you for watching this, and if you like it, of course, subscribe. There's a Patreon if you want to watch more and get early episodes and artwork and things of that nature. I do have other videos being planned, and I also have another channel, Craft Yards, if you want to see artwork and other types of videos there, and also live streams on. There are also plenty of other videos down the road, but if you have any suggestions, want to give me ideas, or you have any comments, and all that stuff, then let me know. Right now I'm over a thousand and I'd like to see myself get beyond two thousand and times that by ten. Until then though, I uh, once again thank you. Wish I could have gotten this out sooner, but life gets in the way.
See ya.